when I wanted the that, or I thought of the that, you were a person who created part of the how. And as entrepreneurs, we live in the how. So in essence, the how is the thing that matters the most because you're never outside of the how, because the how is what walks you into the promise. So even though I'm gifted, in order for me to go into my assignment, I have to know where I'm going and get there how. Oh, you're talking good. And so then he sends the people that are assigned to me to get me going where I'm going. So when I started my volleyball club, I didn't know how. I didn't know what I was gonna need. I had no name, I had no business account, I had no money, I had nothing, but I had faith. And so then I started that thing and then people became into my life and they started giving me what I needed along the way. So I'm still in the how because I don't own the building that I'm going to play in yet, 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 right. And so I'm still in the how. How am I gonna get $6 million? That's my next how. So my first how was how am I gonna get this team? And I just put the information out there and they came to me. Then the next was how will I get the coaches? And then it came to me. And then the next was how will I get into a Come facility? On. And then it came Come to on. me. Come so on. we live in the how, because the on. how is yeah. the promise yeah. that you have. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. And let me just, hold on, hold on, hold on. Get, 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 hold on. Let me talk to my sister real quick. I, wait, have you ever, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick, real quick. This is personal me, experience. In, in, in your journey, in your journey, in your journey. So, the, what was the initial goal? What was your initial goal? To start a club. To start a that club. That was the initial goal. You know what's crazy about that? Once you really lock in on how you're going to accomplish something, the that changes. It does. Mm -hmm. You didn't even know you, you wanted to own your own building. I did not. I get in there, oh my gosh, we got this league and we written out this building, it's perfect. This is what I said I wanted to do. And then you get in it like, yo, I need to own this. Exactly. And then the that, the thing that you want, once you start really digging into the strategy on how to get something done, the that changes. Because your initial, you were so immature in your thinking when you started. It's too minuscule. It's too small. Let me, let me say this. That's been I the Social Media Podcast. Thank you so much for coming out, y'all. Have a good night. <laughs> I love everything about what you just preached. However, when you said job. you needed a coach, you figured out how to get a coach. Now you're figuring out how to get a building. You're figuring out how because you're living from decision to decision. I decided that I want the building. I decided that I want the coach. I decided that I want the business. And with those decisions, you are figuring out the how. You guys, the success in your life is simply a decision away. Listen, coaches, consultants, course creators, the number one way to attract clients is through Facebook and Instagram ads, okay? Here's the thing. You don't have time to go through 100 videos, buy 100 courses, and try to figure this stuff out. My brother, Mark Quell Russell, put together the paid ad playbook. He gave me permission to give it to you for free, okay? In the paid ad playbook, first off, the paid ad playbook has generated over $500 million in client revenue. And all of these people are getting 50 to 100 leads every single day that actually convert. And it's not a book. It's just a checklist, all right? But it is the paid ad playbook, all right? But go to socialproofgift.com. Hurry up and get it for free. Socialproofgift.com or text PROOF to 904-447-5274. And there's going to be a bonus video in there that allows you to get a customized strategy for your own personal situation, all right? And that's just a bonus on top of a free gift. <laughs> but go to socialproofgift.com or text PROOF to 904-447-5274. All right, let's get into the episode. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. We're live here in Atlanta with the morning meetup. Yeah! I, I think they understood the assignment. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. <laughs> um, really excited to be here, be able to record this uh, live podcast. And normally, we try to figure out what we're going to talk about, and then we just talk about whatever comes up to be talked about. But because y'all are here, I definitely think we should do a good portion of just like Q&A. Yeah. So yeah. they can, like, you'll be able to see yourself on a podcast because Joe is now an influencer because we turned the camera on him. Right. You think? Joe is a sex symbol in these streets. <laughs> Ladies, he is available. Ish. Kinda. Ish. Kinda. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Kinda. Available-ish. 
Well, I mean, if we're operating by the single till married, yes. Yes. You never know what Joe got going on. Mm -hmm. He might have something going on. I think Joe has plenty going on. Joe has been spending a tremendous amount of time reinvesting back into his image and his self-care. Joe standing over there with the shoes that's coordinating with the shirt. <laughs> then he popped off the splash of color. And did you pay attention to the crispy hairline? I see the... Joe, it looks like you got a facial recently. You scheduled a facial. Give Ladies. Joe a round of applause. Scheduled a facial. Yes. Y'all better get y'all a man on the come up. <laughs> Let's go. Look, weight coming down, money going up. Weight coming down, is that the swag formula? going up. Yes. Swaggy. That is the result of getting in the environment. Say environment. environment. Say environment. environment. Real quick, how many people are going to have the best financial year that they've ever had in their life? <laughs> this year. How many people are going to at least double the income this year than they made last year? You do know that it's possible, right? Okay, real quick, transparent moment. How many people just said it but don't 100% believe it yet? I have another question. How many people said it but you don't know how you're going to do it yet. Let me ask you, what's more important than knowing how you're going to do it or the that you're going to do it? Because the, is it? Is that more? Okay, I would love to have someone defend their point. How many people, okay, so somebody, which mic, which mic are we using? Where this one? mics? Here's a mic right here. Someone believes 100%. If you know that you're going to do it, the how doesn't matter as much. Okay, come defend your point. My name is Tara of Tara's Detox, and I believe that you should just do it. And you don't even have to know how, but if you just get into it, then everything's gonna work its way out if you're just paying attention to the things that need to be fixed. So that's how I do. I just get in and I just do it. And then I just figured out along the way, work out the kinks. And find I like don't 100% agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you say that you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And we don't spend time to figure out how we're going to do it. But we've decided in our mind that we're going to get this thing done. Well, can I, can I, can I, can I say something? Yeah, please, so, qualify it. This is a debate. Some people. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so a lot of people will not do something because they haven't figured out how, and they're not going to do it because they're still trying to figure out how. And there's walking. something, oh, well, okay, we're walking, we're walking. Okay, so. <laughs> for example, I didn't know anything about what I was doing when I got started with what I do. And I said, you know what? We just gonna do it and we're gonna learn along the way, but I still follow people like you who I'm still, I'm learning those things. But if I would have said, oh no, I just need to figure this thing all the way out and have a whole plan, then I wouldn't have never did any of it. Hmm. Please. Marlon has a, Marlon has a rebuttal. Come on. Y'all, we are too professional. Yeah, who's gonna take notes? <laughs> we are so professional. <laughs> Joe, we do not have money on your books <laughs> for the harassment. My name is Marlon. I'm Deuce Walls on Instagram. I'm actually gonna support Tara's point right there because did you see yourself doing all of this two years ago? I did not. All right, all right, all right, all right. Chill out. Calm down. Okay. Okay, okay. Here's the thing, here's the thing. I did not, I did not. Which, which kind of proves my point. So I didn't see that we would grow this, right? So I'm, obviously you have to make a decision and figure out, okay, this is going to be my goal. But I think we have to spend more time on the how than the that. And a lot of people say, this is what I'm going to do. 
and they figure they're just gonna manifest their way into success. We can argue about this manifestation word. <laughs> but the, the, the stra- I spend more time on the strategy than the vision necessarily, me personally. I think if, like I, I think I told y'all, if there was like a forensic team that can come into my shower and put a blue light on the little glass thing, they'll see formulas everywhere. Because I'm not so, f- I'm literally in the shower, like, hold on, if, but if I get 2,000, and then it's just like that, it's crazy. I spend more time on figuring out how to get something done versus the fact that it's going to get done by just saying that it's going to get done. That's just me personally. So let me say, have you ever decided that you were gonna do something and you didn't get it done? Okay. Have you ever come up with a very strategic plan on how you're going to get something done? You map it out and then you get to that particular goal? So what's more important? So. My, no, my, no, my, no, 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 no. Okay, so it is true that you've made a decision to do something that you later didn't do. But there are a ton of people, and I would argue that 95% of you guys also know how to do something that you still hadn't done yet. Yeah? Say it again, say it again. We decide to do things. We make a decision that we're gonna do something and we don't get it done. Anybody understand that, experience that? Anybody in here knows how to do something that you should be doing that you still haven't done yet? Yeah? I believe you're correct that the most important thing is the decision. Yes, that's what I think. There are so many, the richest place on in the world is the graveyard. We've heard that before. <laughs> and it, Don't it is- Don't be using no old, it ain't no old cliche bars and, and all that. it is because he just hates when I drop <laughs> bars before he does. It is because a whole lot of people died with the how in their head and they never went to get it done, right? You have to make a decision and making a decision to get something done is not the same as saying I'm going to do it. You and I said for years that we would build seven figure businesses. We decided in February 2020 that it would happen. And at that time, we had to phone a friend to figure out how. Yes. Right. Not only did we have to phone a friend to figure out how we called the billionaire, a friend on the phone. He's not a billionaire. You said it. Oh, he's not a billionaire He yet? got a really big company. I thought he was a billionaire. No, nah, he's working. Yo, you've never corrected me. I'm not going to say your name. <laughs> <laughs> we called... This is why I just manifested it. We called a super uber successful friend, and we said, how do we get to a million dollars? And he said, if you want to get to a million dollars, go for $10 million. And even after that conversation, you and I looked at each other and said, but we still don't know what to do first. <laughs> Still don't know how we're going to do it. And I believe I, that a person, no, I believe that a person whose mind is so made up will find the hows along the way. That is it. That is it. Yes. yes. I agree. Now, you say that we didn't know how, but as soon as I figured out what I wanted to accomplish, I spent the rest of the year on the how. Mm-hmm. Right. So the so I decide. Okay, I want to make a million. Right. That's it. That's I want to. What happened so, first? No, no, no. But the question isn't. The question isn't what is first. The question is what's most important. Where do? Where should we spend most of the time? Say it again. You don't get to the how without the that. You have to first decide. That. You That's don't get to the how. Piece. This is true. This is true. <laughs> you cannot get this to the true. how without the decision. <laughs> okay. You got me? Okay. All right. Get out the way, Marlon. I got somebody to support. I got somebody to support me. So. So it's Kelsey. I'm with the Bucket Brand from uh, Charlotte. But what we need you to understand, Dave, sometimes. Ooh. Ooh. Now y'all just instigating. Y'all just instigating that. Ooh. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Chill Let out. me say, because I use, I use similar language with someone very near and dear. I said, what I need you to understand. You clap too? 
I didn't clap, <laughs> but I did say what I need you to understand, and I was quickly shut down. Go, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. We need Cheesecake Dave, yes. the Cheesecake Factory Dave, yes. for you to step back to where you were yep. at that point, because that's where we are. Can I tell you how I got there? But you were there. No. And then you got no. to where you are now through yes. that whole process. But, so we're going through the process yes. to understand the mentality that got you where you are. Okay. So first thought was, I'm going to replace my income from this job. I'm going to leave this job. That yes, we spent time on that. That's what I'm going to accomplish. Yeah. After, okay. 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 Here's the thing. I'm not let him saying. Talk. Let him talk. I'm not saying it's not important that you don't figure out. What you, want, what you want out of life, that's important. But what's most important, in, in my opinion, was me figuring out how I'm going to make this thing happen. So after I figure out the destination, I got that. I don't have to spend time in looking at the destination every day. For me, I didn't have to put up pictures of the car that I want all on my dashboard. I didn't have to put up pictures of the house that I wanted. I didn't have to do that. Every single day, I'm like, okay, this is the goal. How am I going to get this thing done? I figured out that if I make $100 on my off day, that's $200 a week, $800 a month, I can make that money. Once I started getting close to that, I set a higher goal. I wasn't even, in the midst of it, I wasn't even thinking about leaving my job. I said I was going to leave my job two years before I did it. Mm -hmm. I decide that. And then my whole focus was building, getting better this month than I made last month. He Making decided, more this month. He decided, right? Yes, I he did. I decided. did. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But Ken, will some of you agree that you say you made a decision, but you put no action, no plan? I spent hours, I spent hours with a pen and paper figuring the thing out. Oh, absolutely. Some of absolutely. you all, some of you all, and I'm only attacking y'all because y'all attacking me. <laughs> some of y'all. Y'all just gonna manifest your life away. I know I'm gonna make a million. I know I'm gonna make a million. How you gonna do it? I don't know, but I'm gonna be a millionaire. How you gonna do it? I don't know. I'm gonna... <laughs> and y'all, some of you really, really think that's going to work. But we have the belief. We need that belief in that mindset to be able to do that. So you might believe, you might believe, but that has nothing to do with you actually doing the work. You might believe that you're going to oh, be successful. Oh, it has everything. You might believe that you're going to be successful, but when you get home, you still make terrible decisions. Right. I believe, I, okay, check this out. I said I wanted to make, I wanted to have, okay, we go from a, a million dollar year to a million dollar a month. I want to make a million dollars in a month. I believe that I have the ability. I believe that I have the skill set. I believe that I have the confidence. I believe it all. But for years, my belief didn't follow my actions. So I invested. I invested, and y'all gonna hear from me. I invested $55,000 to have my actions follow my belief. If, if I did not believe, I would not have invested the 55,000. Right. I say, I believe, so I'm going to have to do something. I think all of you all believe you're going to be successful. But your actions, you're not even parting with your money to invest. If So for some of you, if you had to pay for this to come here, if it was 300 bucks to come, half of you would not be here. So, so, so does your belief on, or your quick. actions come first? Say it again. What comes first, your belief or your action? What comes first, your belief or your actions? I believe, for me, my actions created a belief. My goal created a conversation. I say this is what I want, it creates a conversation. When I start acting, and my action brings some money back, I'm like, oh, that worked, I believe now. But do you know what created all of that? Your oh. decision? Oh. It is. You made a decision first, and we can go back and forth on this, so we're gonna, we're gonna move to another point. No, because I want to hear him out. I know you do because you think he has your back. You, you, you literally just said it yourself. I made a decision that I was going to leave my job and be successful yes. or have a million dollar day, but your actions yes. weren't necessarily in alignment with that decision. Correct. Right? So then you made an investment. You made the investment because you had you made a decision. Making a decision doesn't mean that you know all the pieces to the puzzle. It doesn't mean that you have the blueprint figured out. 
Making a decision says, I am serious and I'm going to do whatever it takes. So you made the decision first. You tried it your way and you saw that that didn't work. So then you made an investment and said, hey, let me affiliate myself with situations and people that will help me do it. The how. Let me find my who's. You found a who that led you to a how. And now you keep doing that over and over and over and over again. You know that you have goals to reach whatever the number is. It could be a, a $100 million company. We don't quite have it figured out, even if it's leveraging community, even if it's leveraging podcasting. We don't know the exact steps of either of those things that are going to get us there. But along the way, because we are committed to the decision, we will find the who's who will lead us to the how's. All right. Okay. Let, a let point me. of clarification, though. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't. Good morning, everybody. Okay, okay. My name is Javante from Philly. Don't I'm the host. Don't fail me, Ariel. I'm the host of the Movement Builders podcast. Don't just build a business, build a movement. I think this room gets real sensitive about money because we're entrepreneurs. So I'm gonna take it to the realm of politics, right? Everyone looks at Barack Obama as a unicorn. There were tons of black folk who woke up and said, I'm gonna run for president. But why was Barack Obama so successful? Because he had a plan of how to actually mm -hmm. accomplish about the it. presidency. There right. were tons of civil rights leaders who wanted to desegregate the South. But Martin Luther King was more successful because he had a plan. He had right? a dream. And the dream, oh my God. and the dream was the plan. Drop and, and I will, I will, if, I will, if I will, this mic wasn't so expensive, I would drop it right now. <laughs> the boots okay. are fired, but, but, but I would just but. finish with this point as I close. Oh, <laughs> and I will just say, are they do taking not shots at us on not, our own show? <laughs> do not confuse the that with the decision. The that is not the decision, the decision has to come before the that or the how. But the that yes. is the thing. Like everybody wakes up and says, I want to start a business. The decision has to happen before. I think I, hold on, hold on. several seats. Okay, I'm going to just take no. one. You I'm going to just take that one. That was good. So here, here's, here's the thing. I, I, think, I think I figured it out. And I want to hear from you all. I think I figured it out though. I love you, I think, <laughs> I think we need to create a checklist of a few things that we need to check. Okay. The, do we have a clear direction? So if I said what your goal is, some people will say financially free. Mm -hmm. How many people, your goal is financial freedom? Listen, as you know, I am in Nehemiah Davis's inner circle. I talk about him all the time. Last year, I had the biggest year financially based on his teachings. Actually, we just ran a play. He helped me make $70,000 in one day. Listen, what he's doing right now is an upcoming digital masterclass teaching exactly what he taught me to have a seven-figure year. I'm telling you, I owe a lot of my success to this man because he just understands marketing in a whole nother way. But what he's doing is offering the things that I he taught me to you for free. He's doing a digital masterclass that he's given to you for free at General Admission, 50% off the VIP. I suggest VIP. Um, because you, you get a lot more time with him and he really pours into the VIP. But if you just want to go to the class and you want to be a part of it, general admission free. A lot of y'all have been following him, waiting for him to open something up. He's giving it exclusively to the podcast listeners, 50% off. So don't tell nobody, okay? So listen, go to spmasterclass.com, free general admission, 50% off VIP. Do VIP though, okay? spmasterclass.com. Go get it. Let's have a big year this year. Raise your well, hand high if your goal is financial freedom. That, that is so fuzzy and broad. How do, you, how do you determine that you're financially free? Raise your hand if you know what it takes to be financially free. And I'm going to call on you. Put that hand down real quick. <laughs> <laughs> right here. I want to see you in blue. What does it take for you to be financially free? Thank you. Uh, me and my family, we already are financially free. Okay. So we're retired at 42. Okay. Okay. So thank you. For us, we had to first decide. I'm sorry, but we also had to plan. So I think it's a hybrid approach that it's important to do both. Are you a giver? I am. I am. What, what do you give to? 
What do you mean, like, as far as? Yeah, what is your, what is your? I give to everybody. Whatever you need, I talk to you. I fill out your needs, not your wants, your needs. And I'll give it to you. Do you Ooh. see what I'm saying? So if I have it to give, right here. Oh, whoa, you said what? If I have it to give, I give it to you. If you have it to give. Yes, yes. So you're not necessarily financially free. You're restricted in some areas. That's not what I consider financially free. We all have so, a different definition. But now but for me. But calculate your financial freedom. For me, I mean, or financial not calculate, free, but define your financial freedom. My definition of financially free is me and my husband do not have to work. All of our expenses are paid. Our children's college educations are paid for. Each one leaves the house with a car. Each one of credit is already where it needs to be before we even leave. And their college situation is all taken care of. And you're We're a giver, content. yes? You're a giver? Yes, sir. Do you feel like that's a bit selfish where I have I went to a level where I can take care of me and mine? That's why I'm here, because my passion now is to help everybody else get to that level. Financially, we're not as free as we want to be. We want to be able to give more. No, because yes? for me, yes, I would love to give more, but I'll give to the, the that I can. At this point and at this level, I feel like sometimes it's more important to give your time, your essence, and your energy than necessary. Now, funds will come. You got the idea, we put in the work, we can get the funds. But you have to have that vision first. Before the, you can have it, whoever, who's ever vision. For me, it's teaching people to profit through NFTs. What is your business? Where are you going? Let's find something that fits that. Not squirrel syndrome, everybody's doing art. You ain't an artist. So why we wanna do art? No, let's look at where your, where your experience is and let's go there. So to me, it's important to have that vision, but it's also important to take that vision and then plan for it. So I think it's a hybrid approach. For me, financially free is I can do what the heck I want when I want. Can you? <clears throat> Sir, yeah. I can. Every time? As long as my husband's okay with it. <laughs> I'm just being real because we talk to each other and if, if it's something I want to do, I mean, it's a nice, not a lot of nice dudes up in here. If I look at him and say, yo, is it okay? He gonna be like, heck no, right? So I can't do oh my everything God. I want to do. I just do. got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but I'm being real, because right. women in relationships, we, it's not that we go blind. It's real early in the morning. Okay, I love what you said. <laughs> I love what you said, thank you. And I still don't believe you, you've quantified what it means to be financially free. Let me tell you, let me share something that's gonna be very painful for several of you in the room. Raise your hand if you're a giver and you just wanna help everybody that you can. Oh man. You... <sighs> be prepared to be broke for life if that is your goal. And I will tell you why, guys. Unfortunately, as big as your heart is and as generous as you want to be and as giving of your time as you want to be, it is exactly what David said. It is selfish to build a business or, or to desire impact that is based on your time. It's not scalable. If what you really want is financial freedom, to me, financial freedom extends beyond my life, right? It's the legacy that I am building and putting in place for generations far beyond me. And it would be so selfish if I said, I did it through just my time. I gotta have some money because money is what's gonna push this vision forward. My time is limited. Your time is limited. Everybody's time is limited. So I can't possibly impact solely through my time. When we're talking about financial freedom, the very definition of it is in the phrase itself, financial. So what you have to do, what you have to do, what you have to do givers is quantify what it means for you to be financially free. So we start to look first at what it means for us to be outside of what our dream is for anybody else, how long do, what, what's our average life expectancy? Based on the life that we desire, because many of you are calculating your, your worth and your value and how free you are based on the life that you have, not based on the life that you want. Okay? 
who and where I am today is not who and where I will be 12 months from now. I don't even desire to be this person with the same things and the same thoughts in 12 months. So what I want you to do first is map out what that life looks like. What does life look like for me? What will I be absolutely happy with? And then we have to add those numbers up. And then we have to do some, 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 some mathematics and say, based on average life expectancy, and then add about 10 years to that, because you know, whatever. How much money do I actually need? Now, that's just for my survivorship. But then I do have dreams and goals. I do want to help people. I do want to be charitable and I do want to give. Well, what does that look like? Who am I giving to? How much do they need? How much do these organizations and charities and individuals need? What am I going to budget myself at? Because even billion dollar companies give based on what they can give. They're just not freely giving, right? It, they create these budgets and they stick within those parameters. So what is the budget? In, in your idea of freedom, how much do you give? If I could give away a million dollars a year, I would do that. I'd probably do more. But Donnie Wiggins today is not in a position to do that, right? So I am not yet financially free. I still have to perform for, for something to contribute to the future of my life and my daughter's life and her and all of you. So I'm going to ask you one more time to just simply raise your hand if you have a goal of being financially free. Keep it up high, high, high. I want you to keep your hand raised if you know, if you're able to quantify what that means. Mustard, come on up. Black right here at the mic. Come on up. What does that, what does that look like? So, can you, you said quantify meaning? I want you to answer Dave's first question. What does it take to be financially free? And I'm looking for quantification in that. So when it comes to what it takes to be financially free, to me, that means that you don't have to worry about any bills. You don't. I'm, go ahead. Focus you don't have to you. worry about any bills. You don't have to worry about, you know, taking care of your family, taking care of your expenses. Everything is paid for you. You can live the life that you really want to live, depending on that person. And when you say quantify, can you kind of elaborate on that question more? Well, level Quantify, so are you, are you saying like a price? Uh, David, you got somebody okay, like yeah. you in the room. So, <laughs> I know this part. He knows this answer. Let him help you out. So being clear on, so here's the thing. Our goal of financial freedom, it's hard to tell when we got there. It's how do we tell when we get there? Like when we've arrived, right? Because there's a couple ways you could not have to worry about bills. You could go live in a rough part of town where the bills are lower, drive a car that's not as nice, maybe not eat the food that we desire to eat, eat off the dollar menu daily. You can, you can get to a point where you don't have to worry about bills. Homeless people, are they financially free? Uh, essentially, so, homeless people are financially free. They so, wake up and can do whatever they want to do. They ain't got no job to go to. So it sounds like you're saying, how do we tell when we get there? So here's the thing. I do believe we have to be clear on the what the there is. If the there is a million dollars in a 12 month time frame, let's say that. If your goal is to make a million dollars in 12 months, how do you know when you got there? When I, when I make a million dollars in 12 months. Easy to calculate, easy math, simple. If your goal is to retire your parents and give them a $10,000 a month stipend, how do you know when you got there? When I do exactly that. When you tell them, go into your job, you ain't got to work no more, and you got 10000 coming to your account every single month. But the there be so cloudy, and we just say, I just want to be a millionaire. Well, do you want to make a million dollars, or do you want to be worth a million, or do you want to have or make a million every year, or do you want to have a passive million every year? All totally different conversations. So I, I would say... Um the point of living comfortably, right? Living to where not being homeless, because I'm sure they're not comfortable. You know. If you made a million dollars a year, do you think you'd live comfortable? No, nah, no. Nah. What about 10 million a year? Nope. My goal is a, is a, a billion, just because the more money I, I believe, the more money I have. You the more think people I can you'd live, live comfortable if you made a billion dollars? 
it it'll come with a lot of stress, but yeah, I, I can live comfortable. You well, think I can live you, comfortable okay. less than that. But. Do you think you can just go outside and hang out and go to the mall and kick it with your family without security guards and everybody being around you? You think that's comfortable? I don't want to be famous, but having the money, you don't have to be well You known. automatically make a list when you hit a billion dollars. Yeah, yo, first off, let me let me just let me just tell let me just ask you this. Do you know what it takes to be a billion a billionaire? Innovation. So like me, I'm a I'm an inventor. No, 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 not so. not not innovation. What it's going to require of you being away from your family, being focused on, you know how many people you gotta be responsible for? And there's no wrong answer. We want you to think it out. We want you to literally talk through these high level conversations. I said I want to make a million dollars. I said I want to make a billion dollars. Do you know what it really takes to do? Have you ever asked all of you guys in the morning meetup? Did you ever ask David? Well, what exactly does it take to make a million dollars? Who did? He told you. OK, what does it take? Who, who's, who's a millionaire? Bill, are you in the morning remember, meetup? I'm trying to remember You're my answer. Yeah, what I'm I tell you? Did you hear that? Did you hear his explanation? Uh, no, I didn't hear. It. You weren't there yet. Okay. So I'm just curious. What do you believe it takes? Not innovation. Sure. What does it take to become a billionaire? Help me see you as a billionaire. It definitely takes a lot of sacrifice. Um, like you said, being away from your family, um, handling things that you know you got a lot of weight on your shoulders. But um, what it takes, I feel like it, it just takes drive and passion. I feel like if you got some of those, you a know. A billion? Drive and passion? I mean, look That's at, the best you have is so drive and passion. Here we go. Here we go. You so get now, a billion. Right. And you get a billion. So, Everybody in this room it, has drive and passion. It's right. like, uh, so, like, so um, now we're, I'm, I'm sorry, real quick. Now we're, now we're moving to the point. I want to be there. I'm going to be a billionaire. And I would imagine, I would imagine, I don't know, but I'd imagine that you have not spent enough time on the how we're gonna make this happen. Yeah. Discipline as well. So I would, I was, I wasn't finished before y'all coming so? out. Yeah, yeah. He said I wasn't finished. Yeah. I'm All right, gonna yeah. discipline in there on you. Yeah. Well, let's give him a round of applause. He's gonna, yeah. dig, he's gonna dig yourself in a deeper hole. Wait, and, explain, like this whole what's podcast. Your what's your name and what's your Instagram? <laughs> JL the Genius. So you can follow me at JL underscore the Genius. Thank yeah. you, JL. Yeah, give him a round of applause. Because we can make the whole podcast on that conversation. Nella, talk to me. I'm sorry, David. Okay. Don't apologize. You might but. be sorry to yourself because I'm coming back. <laughs> okay, that's fine. But when you sit here and you think about the decision and the plan, it's just like a GPS. You put something into the GPS, you're making, me, you're making a decision to get to this point. The GPS, after you've made the decision, then has to calculate. The decision always remains the same, but the plan doesn't always remain the same. That's you a better fact. preach a word. This is true. You better preach a this word. This is true. I wouldn't clap just yet. I wouldn't clap just yet. I was an attorney in my past life. I'm here for the debate. Okay. So, so, we decide the destination. Do you spend more time on figuring out where you want to go or do you spend more time on actually getting there? It depends. Are we going to dinner or <laughs> because it, I mean, I spend more time figuring out where I'm going to have dinner. How long does it take to figure out? How long does it take? To... <laughs> Jimmy Stewart. How long I does it take more time figuring out where I'm going to go? How long to does it take? It takes hours for me to decide where I'm going to dinner, and it takes 15 minutes to get there. No, it doesn't. It takes hours for you to get dressed, figure out where you're going to get there. I'm, you I'm gotta, already dressed. You're never already dressed, darling. <laughs> I'm not saying, and here's, here's my, here's, I guess, the, um, the takeaway. I believe there are some areas that we need to address. One, maybe the there is not that clear. Okay. That was a bar. It rhymed. <laughs> Maybe the there for you is not that clear. We want to be financially free or we want to be wealthy. Maybe the there isn't that clear. Or maybe the there is very clear. You've mapped out what it's going to take for you to live a good life. 
but we haven't really spent a whole lot of time on the strategy. We haven't spent a whole lot of time on figuring out, okay, how am I going to get there? And here's what I'm here to tell you. Sometimes you figure out, okay, this is where I want to go. And then you go through the process, days, weeks, months, strategizing how you're going to get there. And then you realize, you know what? I don't want to go there. I said I wanted to be a billionaire too. Billionaire. I'm with it. And then I started mapping it out, strategizing how much time it's going to take, the team I'm going, how many people I got to manage, all that kind of stuff. It is going to take years of focus. And I don't want to spend my life figuring out how to be a billionaire. So I changed that destination. I'm good. There's not a whole lot I can do with a billion for me that I can't do with a hundred million. I, my next goal is a hundred million because I know I'm capable and I have some real big give goals. I made a shirt that said, make a million, save a million, tie the million. We make a million, we save a million. I've not tied the million yet. That's my goal specifically. So there's a couple of things we need to check. We need to see if our there is clear where we want to go. Then we got to figure out if our plan is clear, the, the how we're going to do it. Yes, ma'am. Hey, great morning. I am Coach Mikea. So as I was sitting and listening to you, the Bible says in all things, get an understanding. Mm -hmm. So as we were talking, we were so busy talking about what was first that we didn't listen to the question of what mattered the most. You're on my and side, yes? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the Just deal. Check. Don't blow this. <laughs> Just check. When I wanted the that or I thought of the that, you were a person who created part of the how. And as entrepreneurs, we live in the how. So in essence, the how is the thing that matters the most because you're never outside of the how, because the how is what walks you into the promise. So even though I'm gifted, in order for me to go into my assignment, I have to know where I'm going and get there how. Oh, you're talking good. And so you're then he good. sends the people that are assigned to me to get me going where I'm going. So when I started my volleyball club, I didn't know how. I didn't know what I was gonna need. I had no name, I had no business account, I had no money, I had nothing, but I had faith. And so then I started that thing and then people became into my life and they started giving me what I needed along the way. So I'm still in the how because I don't own the building that I'm going to play in yet, 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 right. And so I'm still in the how. How am I gonna get $6 million? That's my next how. So my first how was how am I gonna get this team? And I just put the information out there and they came to me. Then the next was how will I get the coaches? And then it came to me. And then the next was how will I get into a facility? And then it came to me. So we live in the how, because the how is the promise that you have. Hold on. And let me just hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me talk to my sister real quick. Have you ever hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick, real quick. This is personal experience. In your journey, in your journey, in your journey. So the, what was the initial goal? What was your initial goal? To start a club. To start a that club. That was the initial goal. You know what's crazy about that? Once you really lock in on how you're going to accomplish something, the that changes. It does. Mm -hmm. You didn't even know you, you wanted to own your own building. I did not. I get in there, oh my gosh, we got this league and we written out this building, it's perfect. This is what I said I wanted to do. And then you get in it like, yo, I need to own this. Exactly. And then the, that, the thing that you want, once you start really digging into the strategy on how to get something done, the, that changes. Because your initial, you were so immature in your thinking when you started. It's too minuscule. Oh. It's too small. Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10,000? Like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're positive, you're going to make a million dollars, would you give me 10,000? Of course you would. It's no brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. But there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast. But I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby. But... I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000. My ebook is only 37 bucks, okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I, I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. Let me let me say this. That's been I the Social Media Podcast. Thank you so much for coming out, y'all. Have a good night. <laughs> I love everything about what you just preached. 
However, y'all when you said this, y'all. you needed a coach, you figured out how to get a coach. Now you're figuring out how to get a building. You're figuring out how because you're living from decision to decision. I decided that I want the building. I decided that I want the coach. I decided that I want the business. And with those decisions, you are figuring out the how. You guys, the success in your life is simply a decision away. Every single day, that's a bar. (laughs) Every single day, whether you're having a great day or a not so great day is based on the series of decisions that you made in that day. The how does not even come into fruition until you make a decision that you wanted it. The reason that she wants so much more now is because she decided that she did. The how that you do to start your business are not the same hows that you do to take and scale that business to a million dollars or $10 million or whatever it is. However, a person who's not interested in scaling won't scale their business. You're going to continue to wake up every single day and do the minuscule to keep getting what you're getting. It literally starts with a decision. It starts with a decision. Now at this point, we're arguing semantics because one cannot survive without the other, okay? But I want you guys to understand, if you want to be successful, make a decision. If you wanna have a great day, simply make the decision. If you want to have a successful relationship, Make the decision. The how doesn't matter. You don't know how it's going to all fit together. You don't know how the day is going to go. But you do know that you woke up and you decided that it was going to be great. Everybody in this room should just decide. But you just said you can't decide how the day is going to go. No, no, no. You absolutely get to decide. You just don't know how you're going to. I decided that today is going to be an amazing day. How that's going to happen, we'll see. It's going to be based on the series of decisions that I make all throughout today. But but amazing day is broad. But if we say the goal for today is to make $1,000, we need to figure out how. But and the I decision can decide. comes first, David. Like, it I does. Just Here's the thing. I, I, cannot, I cannot argue that the decision comes first. And I'm, I'm just saying, where do we spend the most time? That's it. No, no, do you no. know some people? Do you know you, some? We said what's most important. No, he what's said most where do we spend the most time. We said both. Okay. Okay. We said Ar- both. Ariel, let me. This is interesting because the conversation really started with do you believe? No, it actually started with do you believe that you're going to get it? And as I've been sitting here, the conversation has kind of evolved into a different direction because she'll be reaching an argument. Like she'll just go <laughs> another direction to win in this area. It's bomb. It really spun out of control. So I'm Ariel. <laughs> Ariel, 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 tread lightly. (laughs) You look beautiful today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Ariel Young, career transformation coach. And uh, what I was going to say in terms of believing is, I manifest, I meditate all day. And the the small decisions is what took me to get here. I made a decision to leave my job. I planned out what I was going to do year after year. But the strategy, the the tiny details was a decision. When I started my podcast, though, that was nowhere in the five-year plan. So I literally borrowed your belief. It was never in my manifestation. It was never in my, I wasn't sitting down like, oh, what what kind of conversations do I want to have? But I said, okay, I'm taking actions and you showed me the how. When I saw the back end of the YouTube of like, okay, this is these are the thumbnails. This is how I need to organize my files. I just borrowed your belief. It had nothing. Honestly, in that moment, I let go of my manifestations. I let go of like my own like will and what I'm capable of. And I borrowed your belief. I took a step and I trusted your how. And now I'm here. And now my manifestations are getting clearer because of the details of how you manifest. As I was sitting down, I, the limitations of like what I believe I could do was so far from where I am today. So in in like in what you said, you can't have one without the other. And that's why I really trust both you guys and watching you guys as you live your life because my life, my decisions get clearer and clearer and clearer every day. Awesome. That's okay. That's okay. Ariel, drop the mic. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, my name is Sabetha Price. Um, okay. So I have two things. 
First and foremost, I believe that financial freedom is a birthright. We all have you it. You better speak it. We all have it. Number two, I believe that God is actually the most. I'm sorry, do we all have it? It's a birthright. It's a birthright. We were all we born not, with we it. We were born worth it, but a lot of times. We're all born with financial freedom? The birthright. The, the birthright. Right the right. Have the have right to have. The right to have. Okay. The right to have it. Okay. Now it's up to you to uncover it. Uh, the second thing, I believe that God is the greatest manifester of all time because in the beginning was the word, so we had to make the decision. You better speak it. <laughs> in order. But he worked for six days. He was like, okay, I'm going to do this and that. And, and then created Adam. And then he was like, you know what? Adam, he needs somebody. So let me just create something. What was that sounds like a decision. What was more important? He made the decision. Sounds like he made a much more successful decision. Seems like a whole bunch of strategy. and we're, I'm sorry. Go for it. I'm going to let you finish your point. I'm going to leave you alone. That, that was, was the point? It? Okay, give a round of applause. That was a good point. <laughs> hey, Chris, hey. what's up? Christine at Number Curls, natural hair specialist. As we've been talking. Okay, fan club. Squat. <laughs> I can see both your side, Donnie, and your side, Dave. But what is really resonating with me is the book that we read, Who, Not How. Exactly. And that the who's that are in my life are what's most important to really help me get in the directions that I need to go. Especially like what Arielle was saying, my vision of where I could go with my business, I didn't even see myself being where I am today, nor did I even see myself where I would be in the future. But so many of you in this room have helped me to see this is possible and have helped me to show or to help me to get there. So the question that I have for both of you is, I have invested so much money in trying to find the perfect who that's going to get me to where I see myself. But instead of finding who's, I'm finding foos. <laughs> and so I wanted to see what are some good things to look out for to make sure that I'm finding and putting myself in the room with the right who's so that I can get to the financial freedom that I ultimately see myself getting to. Cool. Yeah. Can, you, can you give me an example of uh, one of the foos that you ran into? No name dropping, no name dropping. Unless you want to. Nobody's gonna know outside in this room if you yeah, just wanna, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? It just might be on YouTube. <laughs> Let's say, I'm just gonna use a hypothetical. Let's say, because I make natural hair and body care products, let's say I go to someone who says, hey Christine, I can show you how to specially formulate shampoos. Great. I'm going to go to that person, pay money for them to teach me how to make shampoos just to realize they don't really know what they're doing and they're buying from a wholesaler. How did you qualify the person? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. How do I qualify the person? Because I don't have the experience. I don't know what I should cool. be looking Not, out it's for. It's all good. It's all good. So let's say somebody else comes to you and says, hey, I can teach you how to do it. What would you do? Well... Usually I've said, let me show proof and testimonials, but I found that those can be bought. I found that a lot of things can be bought. A lot of things can be photoshopped. A lot of things can be swayed. And people are becoming so good at being manipulative that I have my guards up. Give me, give me, an, give me an example. Give me an example of somebody. Well, I, maybe I don't, you don't want to say the person, but I think, and this is just kind of, kind of, just kind of attack the question is, I think the next time you're looking for somebody, you will be a lot smarter in knowing what you're looking for. So I've lost a bunch of money investing in things that I thought were going to work and it didn't. But I needed to go through that process so that I understand what works. You pay somebody to teach you how to make some money and they don't. But they made money and they got me to invest the, in them. So they did something right. So is it them or... Was I not willing to receive the information? I've had a bunch of people who ask me to teach them how to do something, but they don't do the they don't do what I tell them to do it the way I tell them to do it, and they say, "Well, my information didn't work." So it could be that it could be you. That for be. sure is not me. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but no. it could be that you didn't understand how to evaluate a person. So now, that next time, well, next time you'll probably do a little more research. You'll probably dig a little bit deeper. You're a lot smarter now. Can you get taken advantage of the same way you just got taken advantage of twice? Knowing no. what you know now. 
Not the same exact way, no, because with each time that I'm investing and it turns out to be a flop, I'm taking more steps and protocols, but I'm still kind of feeling in the dark because I don't know the things that I should be looking out for. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? We got to give it a shot. So when I invested with Myron, I didn't know. I saw some of my friends invest and they, they like did this challenge and they started making this money. I said, I'm giving it a shot. I've also invested in some, some things that it just turned out to be nothing. But I, I'm a little bit better in understanding how to invest now. I don't know, you have any advice on that, Doc? Yeah, I mean, business in general is gonna be trial and error. Every investment that you make won't multiply, right? Some will be absolute losses, which we can look at as a lesson instead of looking at it as a loss. Um, but you do have to, you can't just be gullible, right? And based on how you answered that last question. I feel I'm very gullible. You're gullible. Totally. And you know I'm just going to shoot it straight to you. Yeah, right? I know I am. Yeah. Do you have other people on your team or are you a solopreneur? I have one other person on my team. What do they do for you or with you? They help me. <laughs> they help Girl, me. if you don't book a consultation call with me ASAP. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a business partner, but that person has taken a back role. So I wanted okay. to make sure that I acknowledged her because she is a part of my team. Sure. But right now I am holding down the fort. Yeah. So well, let I think me, it's let interesting to be, know that you don't know how she helps you, though. Yeah. It sounds like she doesn't. She's just giving respect yeah. um, because this is going to be broadcast all over the world. <laughs> I said it. You didn't say it. You so didn't say it. You didn't say it. And stick to that. OK, but let me let me just let me give you guys a real piece of advice. Yes, business is about testing and we're all going to make bad decisions throughout time. But a part of building or being successful is understanding our strengths and weaknesses, right? And if vetting people is repeatedly your weakness, I would suggest you stop it immediately, especially if it's costing you money and then figure out who can better help me vet these individuals who are going to help me build my business, right? Now, obviously there's some due diligence that you have to do. And if you are a solopreneur right now, or if you can't depend on your business partner to kind of help in this way, then there is a checklist of things that you should be doing. Number one, how'd you hear about me? People who are uber successful at doing something typically are not gonna be in your DM saying, let me help you. Typically, it's going to be the other way around, right? I, I prefer, I personally prefer to deal with people who were referred to me in some way, right? I am very, very cautious about taking fast action on total strangers, though that's not always a bad thing to work with a total stranger. I just prefer references. And because of your decision making ability or your discernment, your ability to discern people, you probably should stick within recommendations of people, you know, attend trade shows and conferences where people have been vetted out before they're featured on stages and things like that. Um, request testimonials and references. In your industry, especially when we're talking about chemists and formulations, they're usually accompanied with recommendations that you can actually reach out to by phone. So when you get a referral or when you're checking somebody's recommendation, ask for their company name and then Google that company name. Let's make sure it wasn't a purchase testimonial and that company actually exists. Like this registered established a company, company can actually just be Googled. Like just do a little bit more and that's probably gonna get, be your first step to finding someone on your team that can help you make those important decisions because it sounds like your skill set is in your product development, right? Not necessarily the operations behind your business. So I would be looking for that person that, hey, I recognize that I'm the talent in my business. Who can help me run and manage and take this business to the next level? You find that person. And then together, you and that person vet out the rest of the team step by step before you make large investments. Life changing. Thank you. There Very welcome. What up? Uh, the experience salon and spa, Columbia, South Carolina. So follow me. I agree with both of y'all, but the number one thing I think we all forget about is the why. Why did you start? Why do you want to do this? We always talk about oh, we do this, do this. But if you have, if you understand your why, 
everything else will fall in line. Like, why do you want to be financially free? Why do you want to start the business? Why are you here today? So I had to look at it from my standpoint because it was not my goal to open my salon. It was my goal to marry my ex, buy us a house, start a family. The goal, was, the I goal, doubt it. That was, was the goal to marry your ex. Right, my ex. He's my ex for a I reason now. Not marry never your seen. then ex or no, marry he, who is now your ex? He is now my ex. He is now my ex. Okay, so I am single. Hold on. I, no, okay, no, no, okay. no. Just, just, just keep going. Keep going. So, I'm gonna, okay, stay focused. I, stay focused. I'm glad that I went through all that because now I was able to pour back into my business correctly and to end up closing six figures by the end of the year. Mm. Okay. So now um, that I understood, I understood why I needed to leave him, it put me in a position to put back the operations, to put back into my business, stuff like that. So I had to figure out my why. I created it, learned from it, and I built on to it. So now my goal is now is to teach other people why are you starting this so you can create the revenue that you want to create so you can have the financial freedom that goes for everybody else who, because my financial freedom is not as big as everybody else. To be honest, if I make 20000 in a month, that's freedom for me. For me. I can't speak for nobody else because with 20000 a month, the only thing I can do that I'm happy about doing that means the most to me, I can tell my mom, you don't have to work and drive buses no more. You know how Ooh, You know how you're going to do that? Have I you mapped it out? Yes, I did map it out. What does that look like? But I also asked the number one question. I said, how much do I need to pay you for you to live comfortably? Because she don't ask for much. Like, she's 71 years old, so it's not much that she really needs. I said, how much do I need to pay you a month so you can tell these people to go to hell? That, why, that was my first thing I had to do. I had to ask her first. Then I planned it out. I said, I said it wasn't much. It was like, he said, Ma, let me bless you so we can send all these people to hell. <laughs> Period. <laughs> so once she told me the number, I broke it down. I said, okay, that's not too bad. So in my mind, I said, if I need to make this amount, I need to create this package, charge it at this High dollar, I mean high dollar ticket to create it. So if I did it, and I did it for six months, so I was able to do it. So my, like I say, I'm really close to by the end of the year that she's gonna be able to tell the people. Good. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Just bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. So once you understand your why, your why is gonna jumpstart everything else. So yeah. either and, one and of y'all not. Why do you, and why do you want to marry your ex again? No. You said, why did I want to marry Oh, no, oh, oh, I, I see. Old yeah. news. Old oh, news. Yeah. Okay. Old right. news. Old right. news. Well, like thank that. you. Thank you. So. Get the why. Okay. Yes, man. I never heard that on somebody's why list. Like, 10000 a month. Marry my, get my ex back. <laughs> I want to invite you to pick my brain. Mine too. Mine too. Yours too? Mine too. Yours too. Okay, you guys. Brain. We are so excited because we just dropped our newest podcast series called The Brain Picker Podcast. David. Oh, it's going down. You get to pick our brain. You have a business idea, a concept. You're stuck. You can't get off the ground. You need the advice of seasoned, experienced entrepreneurs. Not only entrepreneurs that are practitioners, but we got a lot of people that we've been coaching all over the last decade. All over the globe. They got receipts. Not just that, you never know where your next investor might be hanging out and the word on the street is, we got all the connections. That's a big fact. We got all the connections. So if you want to sit down with us and pick our brains- In front of our audience. And we're letting you pick our brains. We won't even talk bad about you for doing it in front of our audience, bringing your business maximum exposure. Find the link somewhere around here, wherever you see it. It's there. And apply- Right now. To pick our brain. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> Hi, my name is... Doesn't she look like she could be related to me? No. Go ahead, what's your question? <laughs> you do look like my cousin. I got you. Um, my name is Netta at Beyond Ecom. And what I do is I help uh, people start their private labels and fund it through reselling on Amazon. And your question was about... Um, 
financial freedom. And financial freedom for me is being able to depend on my systems and me not being able to be like integral to my business. So um, if I were to quantify that, that would be 200,000 to pay off of um, our student loans. A month or a year? A year to pay off our student loans. So monthly that would look like 20K, um, 10 in my current business, um, and also 10 at my job, at my sales job. So I've quantified it in that way. So the, hold on. So half of it coming from your job, half of it coming from your business. Yes. And half of it coming from your job is financial freedom? Um, getting to that next step of my business, yes, that that's what it would be for me at this point. That's what I could see. If we're if we're quantifying no, it step by that step, slide. yeah, just, you cannot well, you just let went that through slide. it though. You cannot let that slide. You cannot. <laughs> Let's not let it slide, Donnie. I'm trying to be. Guys, if we are exchanging our time for money, we are not free. We are not free, and especially if you are working a job where someone else has the power to tell you that they're done with you at any time. But I got a response to that. Okay. So give me something to work with. Please. Okay. A couple, a couple of months ago, I was a school teacher. Now I am in sales and that is a commission based job. So the reason why I switched over to sales is because it helps me elevate my business. So in order to get to that point and be able to see beyond that, I have to work on my sales skills. So in seeing that and adding those together, then I'll be able, I'll be free to actually communicate and I'll get people what they free, need. But yes. am free and working on becoming free are two totally different things. Well, once I get there though. Once I get yes, there. Is, that, that's what we talking about, right? Well, no, you, you literally just said $10,000 a month mm -hmm. from my business and $10,000 a month from my job is the right. equation mathematically to get to financial freedom. Right. And I just really want you to understand that it's not. In 2008, I lost a job where I was making a developer millions of dollars a month. And I thought I was untouchable. Nobody could outsell me. Nobody could outmanage me. Nobody could outperform me. And I make this man millions of dollars a month by myself not to mention the rest of his company. And do you know who the first person was to be let go when the economy crashed? It was me. He landed on top of my condo building in his helicopter while he was about to take his son on vacation. And he told me that day, Donnie, I've got good news and I've got bad news. At that time, I was preparing for my daughter's graduation from elementary school. And he said, the good news is you're going to be able to go to that graduation. Mm. The bad news is today is going to be your last day. And I didn't watch the news even at that time. I had no idea what literally happened overnight. Right. I was the most valuable but most expensive person in that office and I was the first to be let go. So you cannot attach your freedom to somebody's ability to make a decision about you. Okay, so we've got to shift that mindset. Your job will not set you free. Everybody in here, please, on the count of three, my job will not set me free. My job will not set me free. You guys sound like a bunch of people who are excited to clock in tomorrow. <laughs> my job will not set me free. My job will not set me free. How many people in here are actually employed and want to be unemployable? Stand up. What's happening? And now That's I need you to say them. it like you are working on becoming unemployable. My job will not set me free. My job will not set me free. Y'all clock in tomorrow. Go to work. <laughs> you have to believe it like no other. Every single day I drove to my job, I knew that the day that I would not be driving into a job was coming and I believed it like it was a conviction inside of me. You couldn't tell me. I could care less about the performance review that was coming up. I could care less about 
the, the, what do you call those things? Promotion. I could care less about the promotion path that was in alignment for me. I never sought a promotion. Never. Because I knew that my time was going to be up soon. I didn't know when, but I knew that it was. And when I spoke, I spoke with that level of passion. And today it's so. No, 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 no. Don't clap for me. Clap for you. My job will not set me free. Job will not set me free. I need your energy. <laughs> and if you believe it, sure, I need you to right. shout that like you mean it. My job will not set me free. My job will not set me free. Thank you. Everybody, your job is a stepping stone for the things that you need. To, I want you to respect that job and I want you to leverage everything you're learning. I don't care if you're flipping burgers or managing billion dollar portfolios, there is a valuable lesson in every employment opportunity. David and I both leveraged what we learned from our jobs to build our businesses. So don't go in there disrespecting those people. Just go in there knowing that that's not your freedom tool. I, um, the, way, the way I approached it while I was working at my job was, I knew that my job was using me to make money. Your job's using you, right? They didn't hire you because they like you and they rock with you like that. They hired you because they're using you. Well, what I found out is that a job will not even use you if you can't give them a three or four X on their return. So if your job pays you 50,000, that means you have to be making them at least 200,000. Which means you're valuable at at least 200,000. So whatever your job pays, you multiply that by four, that's your current value in the marketplace. But I understood that my job was using me, so my thought to myself is I have to use my job more than my job's using me. So I would come in and they would pay me to be there, but I get an opportunity to go to the table every single day and sell them stuff. I want to sell you an appetizer. You're saying no, but my objective is to get you to buy it. Because I know if I can't get you to buy a $10 appetizer, it's gonna be really hard for me to sell you a $25 t-shirt later. So my job was paying me to practice my sales skills. If you got one drink and you finish, and I say, would you like another drink? And they say, no, that's not the end of the conversation. Because my objective is to get you to buy another drink. Because a couple of things. One, I understand if I can get you to buy another drink, I'm getting better at persuasion and I'm going to persuade people to buy my T-shirt. The second thing is I just understood that I had a goal and I had to figure out, OK, how much do I have to make in tips to be able to invest this amount of money in T-shirts? And I know that every ten dollar drink is going to give me a 20 percent return on the tip. If the drink is $10, that's an extra $2. So me being able to sell you on getting another drink means I'm going to make another $2 because we're operating about a 20, 20% tip. Y'all follow me? But I use my job to become better. I stop, yo, I, I promise you, I can almost pinpoint when I was starting the exit of my job. Not that I left the next day. It took a two and a half, three year journey. I was there six years. But once I, once I realized that I'm going to be using this job, I stopped complaining about my job. And I got excited to go to work because man, this place is gonna pay me again to get better at being an entrepreneur. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. My objective is if I'm off that day, someone comes and says, hey, I want to sit in David's section. And they say, well, David's not here. My objective or for that person to leave and say, I didn't come to the Cheesecake Factory. I came to see David. That's my objective. I'm trying to retain. I'm building relationships. My objective was building relationships while I was working at the Cheesecake Factory. I have so many people that would invite me to their home. That would invite me to their house, invite me to their parties because I'm building relationships. And people are like, yo, how do you build relationships? I started at the Cheesecake. They paid me to learn that skill. But because you may spend so much time complaining and waking up, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to come here again. I'm like, yo, I'm about to go meet with my investor. How you get mad at a meeting with your investor? Every day. Can I it's be It's just honest? the mindset, yes. I hated my job. I complained 
every That's why I made more money last year. Day. <laughs> <laughs> I complain every single day about oh, going to my job. You did, though. And I think it's important to understand both perspectives. You don't have to have a shift where you love the job. David loved going into his job. I hated going into my job. I used to play this song. Anybody familiar with 8-Ball and MJG? I used to play this song every day at a point when I knew like this is about to be a rap. Don't make me kill no muck body in here. I'ma shoot three shots. Somebody that made me hot. I played that song. What song is that? I don't know. Every I've been saying I don't day. <laughs> However, the way Dave used his joy to go in and meet with his investors, I used my hatred to fuel me. I hated those people. I did because they treated me so poorly. No matter how good I performed, they treated me like crap. No matter how much money I made them, I was never good enough. I was always the token black girl who was gonna come in and they made me feel like the quota that had to be satisfied. I hated them. And I left my last job in spite of them, but I did leverage everything that they taught me and I internalized it as investments. I worked in property management, I learned everything. I learned everything and I ended up building my own property management company as a result of what, because those people weren't coming into that building necessarily for that building. They were coming because of the same thing, their shared experience with me, right? The same people whose building, whose asset I managed, denied me the opportunity, Myron, to live in that building. I made enough money between my job and my business to live in that building. Now, I don't know who all we got in the room, but no offense to anybody, there were two white girls who worked for me. I was the same person who signed off on their leases to live in that building with no problem. They didn't make half of what I earned. But then I said, I wanna live in the building. I'm coming in here and I'm seeing these people and I'm looking, I'm approving these people. I make what they make. I can live in this building. And I took my application to my boss and said, I want to live in the building too. I want the same 30% discount that I just approved for them. And my boss said, oh, well, we've ended that program. We don't, we don't do that anymore. And I said, okay, well, well then what do we have to, what, what program do we have in place now? And they said, well, you got to make three and a half times the monthly rent. You got to qualify via credit. And they knew that what they paid me on that job was not three and a half times the monthly rent. But what they didn't know that what I earned in my business plus my job would qualify me. And I talked to my mom and I was going back and forth, back and forth. She said, why would you even want to live there with those people who treat you like that? It was a condominium building that you could rent or you could own. And I said, you know what? You're right. So I walked into that job one day and I gave them my two day notice. <laughs> <laughs> Today, you are going to learn that I will not be here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and then I brought my mom to that same building to tour property. Because I will not work for you, but y'all are about to serve me now. And I'm not gonna rent from the building, the management, I'm not putting any money in your pockets, but I am gonna live in the building. And I ended up moving into this building, not just moving into the building, but I also ended up moving my mother into the building, so you're gonna serve her too. I used my hatred for the people and my job. And my mom used to get on me all every year for as long as I, you get fired from every job, Nitra, it's not them, it's you. <laughs> and one day I had to say, you're right. It is me. I am bigger than this. I am unemployable. 
I am nobody's budget plan. I had to make those decisions. And I really, really, really want you guys to get this because it can't just be I want to leave my job. I want to leave my job and do what? I'm qualified to leave my job because of what? I'm going to take what pieces from this job and apply it to what? How am I going to leverage this job no matter how I love it or how I hate it and make myself a better person? Who is relying on me to do just that? Whose life is going to change because my decisions change? You didn't win this conference. All right, give a round of applause, please. So look, we, we, actually, have to, uh, we actually have to wrap up. Thank y'all so much for getting on the mics, but we, we will continue the conversation. Um, but to, to <laughs> I guess, a, a takeaway, um, essentially, we're all right. Y'all don't care? Y'all just... Whenever he loses, we're all right. Just for the... No, I, 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 I still believe, <laughs> I still believe that um, most of us spend entirely too little time on how. On strategy. Figuring it out. But there's a couple of things we need to check, right? One is the there, where, like the place we want to arrive, how crystal clear can we get on that? And also too, is deciding how we're going to make it happen. But even being clear on where you want to go and being clear on how you're going to get there, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get up out of the bed and actually do something about it. We have to be willing to invest. I'm not just talking about money. We got to invest our time. We got to invest our energy. We got to invest in people. We got to invest in people. We got to invest in coaching and mentors. That's a fact. We got to invest back into our businesses. Got to. All of this is that training that I stole from you. Uh, you stole everything from me. Yeah. <laughs> so our check, real quick. How many people, the destination isn't as clear as you feel like it should be after this conversation? The destination isn't super clear. Raise your hand high. It's, it's okay. Easy. It's not. It's not, it's not super clear. That part needs some work. Go home and work on it. Two, how many people are very clear on how we're going to get to the thing that we say we want? How many people, the, the plan just isn't clear. It's not clear, it's not. The plan on how we're going to get there isn't clear. There are some people who have the problem but they're not going to raise their hand because they think they have it figured out. Listen, I would have probably raised my hand on both. Every day, the, the objective gets, gets clearer because I'm grinding, 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 thinking this is what I want. And then my baby starts to walk. And I'm like, do I want to go that hard after that? Or do I want to really focus on being an amazing father? I'm, I'm still figuring out the how, the strategy. I'm still, I'm still, ref, I refine it every day. Every day. So... You need to figure out which one we need to be clear on. And three is, do you really have the determination, the motivation, the ambition to actually do something about it? And that answer you can't tell me, you have to show me. That's the part right there. Knowing that you have to fix the problem and having the motivation, or not even the motivation, the discipline, having the discipline to fix the problem. That is the part that is going to set you apart. And Dave said something really important. Don't let it go over your head. Every single day, he's still figuring it out, still making decisions, right? You don't have to have your life, your whole life figured out. Let's just solve a problem. And then once we solve that problem, let's move on and solve another problem. Absolutely. Look, we literally got three. Clap it up, clap it up. We, got three minutes. we literally got three minutes. Let's see. So um, we're going to have to close out. But after this, what I'd like for you to do, maybe, uh, Bryn, we can give them maybe a few minutes um, to kind of have a conversation with your neighbor. OK, after we wrap this up, I want you, we'll, we'll take a quick break. But I want you to have a conversation with somebody on this topic, your takeaway. Maybe it's a question for your neighbor. I don't know. But we got to keep the conversation going. OK, how many people learned something? Good. This episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com, 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 themorningmeetup.com. Yes, we are here. The number one community in the world for entrepreneurs, okay? Who else gets together every single day to keep a conversation going about success? 
nowhere in the world. So if you want to be at our next live event, you might as well go to themorningmeetup.com and join us. All right? Give them a round of applause. Got it. And before I go, I need you all to do a favor for me. Ma, please stand up. <laughs> we got a camera there. Joe, Joe, camera. All right, you guys, no, stay standing. Really, really quickly, we got like one round, not the black version. Today is my mother's birthday, and I would appreciate if you join me in singing happy birthday to my mom. Uh, no, 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 we don't have to sing it. Let's just say happy birthday, Mama No, Daddy. I want to sing it. Oh. One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Mama Wiggins. Happy birthday to you. Mama Wiggins. Happy birthday, Mama Wiggins. Happy birthday to you. And if any of you want to sow a seed in the lunch that she's about to charge me for after this. Nope, nope. Keep your money. <laughs> you spend it. You can, you can cash at me a love offering for Mama Donnie. <laughs> Donnie Wiggins on Cash App. Anyway, this episode is also sponsored by Post to Paid, which is the dopest community for entrepreneurs who are struggling to connect, engage, and convert on social media. If you are an entrepreneur who helps people experience a transformative result. You're a fitness coach, wealth coach, business coach, whatever type of service-based industry you may be in and you need help, you're struggling. You don't know what to post on social media. You don't know how I come up with these dope captions. I wanna personally help you do the very same thing. We text you three post prompts every single day telling you exactly what to post on your social media and it's just $37 a month. And I give you the very first seven days for just $1. All you have to do is text POST to PAID to 404-737-2767. And lastly, if you are building yourself as a coach or consultant and you need development from scratch, go to sixfigureedu.com. That's the word six, S-I-X, figureedu.com and get started there. David, do they know? That we just launched a brand new podcast series. Oh, uh, do y'all know? Yeah. It's so late. Uh, did they know for real? What's it called? What's it called? <laughs> the Brain Picker Podcast. Let me say this. Based on a lot of your questions and a lot of hands that were up and a lot of the hands that were down, you guys would benefit significantly from Dave's, David and I's new series, The Brain Picker Podcast. You get a whole hour dedicated just to you just to you to pick our brains, but it is not for free. It is not for free, but it is valuable to you. People who have been on the show have already earned their investment back, hand over fist, so many different ways that I can't even quantify it, but you can go to our website, www.brainpickerpodcast.com. You get to ask concentrated questions specifically about your business for an hour strategy, community, how do I build, how do I do this, how do I start, whatever it is, doesn't matter what level you're at in your business, brainpickerpodcast.com with Donnie and David. Give her a round of applause for name being first. That's good. All right, guys, um, we are going to have our host back up. Everybody subscribe to the podcast, right? To both of them. Hey, look, check people's phone today. Like, are you subscribed to the Social Proof Podcast? Check their phone, all right? All right, we are out of here. Give us a round Love of applause. You are talented, but the biggest problem you have is you do not have a community. If you take your talents and put it in the right community, it will grow. It's like you have a really special seed. If you put it in the right environment, the right soil, it grows. When it's in the wrong soil, it just doesn't grow. You are a very special seed, but you're just in the wrong soil. You're around the wrong people. Do you know at The Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com, there's five to 700 entrepreneurs together every single day. The ground is fertile. I'm teaching entrepreneurship from very basic practical steps on how to grow your business. Inside the morning meetup, we've had multiple people. I've helped dozens of people quit their job. First off, I'm the best coach in the world. So I want you to join the community
community. Not for me, though. Even though I'm going to give you some really good information, I want you to be around this environment of other people that are winning, okay? So go to themorningmeetup.com and just do the dollar trial. If you like it, you can stay. It's only $79 a month. I just want you to taste test it. But if you don't, if you do taste test it, you're like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like David. I don't like the way he looks. It's too early in the morning. It's actually 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can just leave. No obligations. It's all good. Nobody's going to chase you down, okay? So go to themorningmeetup.com. This is exactly what you've been looking for.